Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro, and today we're going to talk about using OneNote for Bible study. Now, if you are a creative or you're a note taker, this is going to apply to you. There's a lot of information here that's useful for all sorts of note taking, not just Bible study. If you haven't done digital note taking before, I definitely recommend OneNote. It's my favorite program for note taking. Uh, most Windows 10 PCs have a, a pre installed that looks like this little purple icon right here. And when you open it up, it's going to give you a page kind of like this and kind of tells you a little bit about what you're doing inside OneNote and how to do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a notebook. So right here, when you click on this icon, I have a bunch of different notebooks. If you don't have one yet, you're going to press right here. It's going to give you an option of naming it. I have one already labeled for church. And so we're going to go over here and we're going to create a new page. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So you see a new page, yours is not gonna look exactly like this. So let's go ahead, now in order to close this, you can just tap right here. I have the artist pad from Tablet Pro over here that has a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. If you're not familiar with what's going on, those shortcuts are being displayed up here by a program, a program called KeyPress OSD. So here, yours is not gonna look exactly like this. You're gonna to wanna to go to View, ruler lines, and I select this one right here, not the smallest one, and not the largest one. While this may seem tempting to use this size, there's a reason that I suggest against it. And you can watch my getting started top three things that you need to do for setup in OneNote video, and I'll link to that in the description. Now here in rule lines, there's an option, always create pages with rule lines, because um, I use rule lines all the time. That's what I recommend. Here, you can see that I have a dark page color. I have this set to the option of use my Windows mode. If you set dark mode, it's gonna do the same thing. The reason I do this is if I'm sitting in church and I'm taking notes, I don't really want this to be really bright and attract attention. Um, that's a personal preference, but I really don't want people being distracted by what I'm doing. So I'm gonna quickly show you my settings. The button up here, I believe it's called an ellipsis. I click on it, click on options. I use dark mode, which is my Windows mode. I have class notebooks unchecked. I have legacy navigation panes um, on, which means there's no bars over here, which you would click on to create a new page. Here I have my font sent to uh, ink free and the size is 16. And that's so when I'm over here, and I write something, let's say, hello, my friends. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and circle that, click ink to text. That's so that this font size fits with the size of um, the lines. Now something that will, if you're like me, will annoy you really quickly. If you tap on the screen, you're going to get the option to use the touch keyboard. And it does this a lot and it drives me bonkers. So if you wanna turn this off, you're gonna click here, click the gear. It's gonna bring you over here to typing settings. You're gonna go down and you're going to click on off for show the touch keyboard when I'm not in tablet mode and there's no keyboard attached. So you need to write something up here. Let's say we're studying James one verse two and we go back to the navigation pages here. I'm gonna do it this way, so we'll go to show only pages. So you can see right here, it shows James 1, 2. So when you're in your list, my notebooks, I have a bunch of notebooks, and in church, I have a bunch of notes. And if there's nothing here, it's gonna look like this, untitled page, untitled page, untitled page, which is not at all what you want. So make sure that you write something up in here so that you know exactly what you're looking at when you're going through. I don't like the navigation panes here. I think they just get in the way. So you click here and choose hide all. And that should stay hidden. So the hardest thing for me was really inputting scripture. And you can write down the reference, but it's really difficult to write the entire verse down. And so um, I worked with another guy and we created something called the Bible Verse Expander. And this is what this whole video is about. Uh, one note and this program right here. So we're talking about James 1, 2, so let's go ahead and hit New Testament. 
We're going to scroll down to James 1, verse 2. Oops, that's Hebrews. 1, verse 2. We're going to double tap on it. It's going to copy to the clipboard. And it is also going to close the window. And those are settings. You can change those in the uh, Bible verse expander app. Okay, so we're right here. And we're going to see the cursor. And then we're going to hit paste. So we have this verse right here. If we want the next verse, we're going to hit insert. Insert insert and you can go through and do um, obviously quite a bit of text this way and input verses this way now if we wanted to do a block of verses not just a single verse um, you tap and then hold and that's going to select the entire group of verses and then you just paste again and this does a little bit different you see that the verse the references here on each of these this only puts the reference here at the very end and you can see the verse numbers inside let's say that you wanted to add a quick picture and this is super generic but we're going to add a picture of jerusalem so here i did a search already we're going to use this shortcut the shortcuts is uh, windows shift and s and we're going to take uh, this beautiful picture right here and that copied to the clipboard we're going to go back and let's go ahead and paste this right here and select this and we'll move it over here and let's delete this text you can see how easy it was to insert that image into our notes if we want to make it bigger we can do this move it over and you can see how nice that worked so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our text. We're going to choose this selection, the last of select tool. And we're going to grab all of it. And if we want to change the color of it, this is the time to do it. Let's go ahead and choose red. And we're going to choose ink to text. And you can see it, it did a, a good job converting this into text. It's not perfect. My handwriting's a little sloppy. If you take a little bit more time on it, it does a really nice job of converting into text. And this text is uh, editable, so we could make it bold, underlined, uh, italic, and set it back the same way any of the other text is editable. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, go back up here into our settings, options, and go to the very, very bottom. There's an option that says include link to source. And this is important for what we're going to do next. So for a lot of what we're doing, it's really important to cite and, uh, where we're getting our information from. Uh, let's go ahead and select an image here. Let's say we want this one. And we right click on this image. And we choose copy. And we're going to go back into OneNote. And let's go ahead and paste. Now we have the image and we have it properly cited so we know where it came from and we're able to go back to it really quickly and uh, have all the proper documentation in order to use this image and then have the link accessible right there without having to do any extra work. Very, very fast. Now sometimes you need to make a chart. So you can tap on this button right up here. It says ink to shape. And uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna make a triangle and a circle and a rectangle and now we're going to add arrows in between so let's go ahead we're going to do arrow in between right here and let's do a one-sided arrow going this way and a bendy arrow going here to here we're going to unselect ink to shape now and let's say we want this to say holy spirit oops God and Jesus. Now if we select these, select ink to text, select ink to text, select ink to text, you can see how easily we can make a nice looking uh, chart or graph or, or illustration using those tools. Uh, you also have a ruler. So if you wanted to freehand a little bit more, um, you can see how you can very quickly uh, draw 
using the ruler. The other tool I have is I have the Tablet Pro Pen Tool, and I have that map to Control Z. If you're using a Surface Stylus, and again, I'm not using the Raphael 5, you would map this one to Control Z. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to uh, really quickly undo um, pen strokes, uh, which is really nice if you're taking a lot of notes. The other tool I'm using, I'm using the Tablet Pro Artist Pad. I'll put a link to the install guide in the description and a link to the specific preset if this is something that you guys want. Uh, the last tool that I'm using is I'm using the Bible Verse Expander. And uh, this can be found in the Windows Store, as can the other two. That means this icon right here, you can go up here and you can type pen tool. That'll show you the pen tool. Type Bible verse expander right here. That's what that looks like. And Tablet Pro. That looks like this right here. Those are the three apps I'm using. This one has an additional app that needs to be downloaded from uh, a link. And again, you're going to want to watch the install guide in order to get this installed correctly. All right, you guys, I hope this was really useful. Um, I know that this is a lot of information. And if you're using this for not just taking notes uh, at church, but at school, there's a lot of great information here for you as well. If you found anything that I shared useful, please subscribe, hit the notification icon, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.